I'm Gene Grant here at the table with our special journalist line panel. Number six on our countdown to the top stories of 2015 is the justice system here in New Mexico. Additional funding for magistrate courts was vetoed earlier this year by Governor Susana Martinez. In recent months, our line panelists have discussed funding for courts across the state with concerns about the current bond system and a case management system that requires the Bernalillo County District Attorney to arraign people within 10 days of an indictment or arrest. And Russell, one of our top 10 stories that we'll get to later is crime in New Mexico, particularly here in Albuquerque. But this whole idea of the justice system being choked, and that's a quote from somebody in the justice system when it comes to money. When you read about things like magistrate, you know, court guards, there's no guards in courthouses and judges are exposed to crazy, you know, domestic violence cases happening right in front of them. You gotta wonder if we're being a little penny wise and pound foolish here. How do we break this through? How do the court system even, even get more money? Can they make a case in this session? Can they, what, what's happening here? What happened in 2015 that they went off the tracks? I think in this session they can make the mm -hmm. case. They can point to specific high profile cases and say, look, a lack of funding has led to this person getting left off. Right. And here are the results. Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening. This is much money we need and this is what we need to do to modernize Why hasn't that system. worked previously? I think it just hasn't been the priority yeah. the, uh, across the line. Even in terms of transparency we've talked about, I can't get information about a particular court case mm -hmm. unless I go to the court case and have them printed out. Places like Florida, you can go and get that automatically. Right. Why are we like this? We're like 20 years behind mm -hmm. in some of our um, transparency issues. So it's a variety of different and things, right. not even counting to how the DAs across the counties are mm -hmm. underfunded. They're mm -hmm. understaffed. You get a high turnover of attorneys. They leave, they go to the private, and you got this revolving door. So you, you don't have a strong structure. That is, and jails and courts help drive this economy. That's something that should be organized. Exactly right. Your, your sense on this one as you watch it? Well, I'm, I'm really going to pay attention to the whole referendum on the changing, changing of the bail system, actually, uh, during the legislative session, because we've had a number of high profile kind of like repeat offenders be yes. in the, uh, the, the spotlight. Uh, that's important. That's on the top end. Mm -hmm. On the bottom end are a bunch of poor people who actually are mm -hmm. sitting in jails because they can't afford bail. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a really, and this is not just New Mexico, this is a national problem. Mm -hmm. New York Times Magazine has written about this. ProPublica has written about mm -hmm. this. Um, you know, Marshall Project has it, written it about this. It breaks poor people financially. It, it does. It, it, it just it, absolutely it, puts them way it, behind it, the eight So that's what I'm that's kind right. of watching is, is the whole bail thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're two ends of the spectrum they're going to try to plug up. Yeah. Julianne, your sense of this one. This, it's complicated. The re trip brought up repeat offenders. The court systems have been landed on in 2015. It could be the year of courts being blamed for all crime here in, in Albuquerque and New Mexico. But they're in a tough spot here. What's, yeah, they get the less than three percent of the state budget, um, mm -hmm. and they are, as you know, Santa Fe's own uh, Justice Barbara V. Hill, uh, serving on the Supreme Court. She pointed out that you know they are they are an important leg of government. Mm -hmm. you know, they're getting you know their three percent of the budget seems really out of sync with mm -hmm. that, uh, how important they are. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing that's important in this debate is that really our court system and our correction system um, is the front line for mental health in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a fundamental problem, but when the courts and the jails are serving that function, we need to make sure that they're supported. Mm -hmm. And what's really happening is that, you know, we have this patchwork system. Mm -hmm. It's really making it worse for people that are struggling with mental health, um, not making it better. Right. You know, we have one hospital. How many jails do we have? That's right. Um, and I, I think that's a big issue. And, and what it really comes down to, what all of you have said, is that this is a resource issue. This is, it's, it's a system issue. It's a transparency issue. But all of that gets right back to the almighty dollar, and mm -hmm. the courts need more of them. Rob, well, it's, it's, it's also a political issue, too. Okay. And, and I was going to pick up on and, Russell's point. There and, you go. And, and mm -hmm. the court has, has taken a lot of heat, especially this 10-day rule, yes. where APD has to give their evidence over to the DA's. The DA then has to present it to, mm -hmm. the, to the defense counsel within mm -hmm. 10 days. And uh, that has led, depending on who you talk to, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that, that, that has helped, or at least, uh, 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 well, helped the fact that, that, that some uh, people who shouldn't have been on the street mm -hmm. got out on the street. Mm -hmm. Now, who you're going to blame or whatever, but I think the, the average person, especially in Albuquerque, because you've seen this happen so many times, they, they don't want finger pointing. They want some. They want some sort of uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. let, me, so let, me, let me ask you this though: mm -hmm. on the finger pointing. Now that the finger pointing has happened, mm -hmm. is it possible that finger pointing is actually a good thing? That the, uh, all yeah. eyes are on the courts now, and people realize these folks need some resources to get the job done. If we're going to blame these people, perhaps we need to think about 
Well, we yeah. also need mm -hmm. some solutions, too. Sandra Rue, the state senator, is talking about extending that 10 days to 60 days right. just on a temporary basis. Mm -hmm. Also, I've, th I've wondered aloud, maybe the state legislature should think about trying to get um, the, uh, th that, trying to mirror the same sort of federal guidelines we have for releasing of prisoners because the feds seem to be getting this right over at David Martinez's office, but mm -hmm. the state has not. That's interesting. Let me finish with you, Russell, on this one. You know, I, I, I want to come back to this idea of 2015 was the year that the courts suddenly were the bad person. They're the, the, the font of all of our ills here for crime. Are judges the lowest paid in the country? I mean, you know, we've got a lot of different things that are keeping justice, as it were, sure. from happening for a lot of folks. Go back and pick up on that, what you started with. The legislature, can we expect a significant bump? Are they going to get satisfied here? Because the very first thing that Governor Martinez's people came out and said, look, the courts are not going to get any money. Once the, once the LFC report uh, came out and said we're going to have short, shorter money than we had to work with before. I think they're saying that in the context of, yeah. look, none of you guys are going to get any money. Everybody could quit begging for money. Mm -hmm. right. You know, right, what job is now? Mm -hmm. And I think the, but this, the political fight is not dead. I mean, yeah. even if we were talking about crime, the, the three strikes will strengthen it. You saw immediately mm -hmm. that you would think everybody was behind that, getting a watered down three strikes rule for the very violent. But you saw immediately a resist from Senator McSorley saying, no, I want more uh, rehabilitation, especially because he's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see that that fight subsiding at all. There you Those go. diversion programs are important too. You know, the mm -hmm. more money they put towards the diversion programs, the less money we have to spend in court and corrections. There you go. Everybody listen to Julianne Grimm. That's the answer right there. Exactly. Let's move on to number five on our countdown list for 2015. The toxic spill earlier this year in the Animus River. Impacted communities in Colorado, New Mexico, of course, Arizona, and Utah. Some lawmakers in those states are still seeking answers from the federal government about how the spill happened and who should be held accountable. Julianne, starting with you, what's your take on the response? We had, the, we've gone through phases. It was the EPA's fault, then it was the contractor's fault, then it was the Interior Secretary's fault. A lot of finger pointing on this one. Seemingly ignoring the fact there's a lot of these things around New Mexico, Arizona, you know, all of our states here I just named, all have empty minds just sitting there with things to happen. Is, is this a good thing? Are we going to take a grand leap forward now that this has happened? I think as a, as a civilization, we've done a really bad job of um, cleaning up the legacy of the Industrial Revolution. Mm. These, these problems are 100 years old. They're 50 years old. They're 20 years old. These are not last year's problems. Right. Um, and so I think that the finger pointing does not really go very far in my heart mm -hmm. to solving any of this. Mm -hmm. um, what I think is really interesting about the Animus River situation, the spill, spill almost seems like, you know, you spill milk on the table. <laughs> right. This was like a giant dump um, of this tangerine colored liquid that mm -hmm. you could just look at it and say, oh my goodness, that's awful. That's right. um, and I think the best way that I've heard this described is that this brought the problem into a technicolor reality. You're kayaking in the river and the water around you right. turns this color. <laughs> yep. That makes the problem real. And People so I think it's, that, yeah. in a way, it's a good thing that this problem um, got so much attention. Mm -hmm. But you look at, you know, the Navajo Nation, which Russell brought up before in, in the context of their dealing with the energy situation, they got the worst end of the deal here. Yep. Um, there are still, you know, they're not going to be able to irrigate. Mm -hmm. there for who knows how many years mm -hmm. and that's going to have a lasting impact. Interesting. Trip Jennings, your thought on this one? So um, mm -hmm. 15,000 abandoned mines yeah. in New Mexico. That's what the uh, local agency, state agency thinks. Bureau of Reclamation kind of in their report on this animus spill said you've got so many of these things across the west. Um, really it's kind of amazing that it didn't happen before, mm -hmm. that's I'm paraphrasing here. Mm -hmm. What I think, and I want to say this about the courts and everything as well as just the finger pointing, it brings uh, attention, but the real rub is thinking systemically. It's about cleaning up. Mm -hmm. The federal government, they've not surveyed all the abandoned mines in New Mexico. They were talking about it five or six wow. years ago after the LA Times did a big thing on uranium and the Navajos. But they haven't surveyed all the abandoned mines. So the real question is, is it going to be a political scandal that drops off the radar? Or are people actually going to start thinking about it systemically and long term? And on that front, there's those corporate entities that they own the mine. They walk away. The business doesn't even exist anymore. There's really no mechanism to make anybody That's do right. anything I mean, about in, it. In markets. Right. That's right. You know, Russell, we've got some movement on the uh, legislative front on this. Just what Julie brought up, Julianne brought up, there's uh, Senator Heinrich's got something. And which includes, you know, a way to, a mechanism to generate some money 
with current mining activity to pay for these spills and cleanups, but a lot of resistance from the from the biz, from the business side of it, from the mining side of this. Absolutely, yeah. and I think this highlight. This was also a botched um, reaction to the spill. Uh, I mean, the Obama administration uh, did not reach out to the Navajo president for a while, and he was right. tweeting about it. Hey, you haven't called me. This is my land. You know, I appreciate a call. And I think the the botched response is going to resonate for a while because I think. The thing happened, the way you respond also tells you what, you, what you're going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And because of that botch response, there's a lack of trust. Right. So that resistance is coming now because all sides that need to be at the table are looking at each other and say, well, I don't know if I trust you. I don't know if I trust you. Right. Meanwhile, it's getting worse. Uh, this stuff is seeping in. We don't know the effects. Um, you're getting a lot of different stories on how this affects livestock That's right. and even agriculture. We just don't know. That's right. Your thought, sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, Ru uh, Russ hit the nail on the head. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, that's, that's the story here uh, now that we're at the end of this year mm -hmm. about this Animus River spill is that the distrust that the Navajos have regarding the EPA, the EPA waited at least two days before they, uh, th 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 before they even let them knew, know what was going on. Mm -hmm. They took them two days to tell the New Mexico Environment Department as That's well. Right. Uh, one, one, one last thing I think that, mm -hmm. that sticks in some people's craw mm -hmm. is that EPA is investigating this. They're, they're going to try to figure out exactly what happened what they could have done better, but that's going to be an internal investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. EPA comes down a lot harder on the BPs of this world than they seem to do on their own. And we have some congressional subcommittees that oversee these things. They're not happy with EPA's response either. They, particularly Republicans want to have way, way, way more transparency on this. Interesting. That's all the time we have. Join us next week as we finish our countdown of the top stories of 2015.